we will give some few examples to make you familiar with the Paxos algorithm, getting familiar with Paxos. Let us look again to the algorithm. And this is, in a sense, the minimal algorithm that you have. You pick a unique sequence number and you send a prepare. And the acceptors get a number, n, and that number will create a promise from the acceptor not to accept any number less than n. And then the acceptor sent highest number proposal accepted that is less than n, and that is the promise. Once you get a majority of promises, you basically pick the highest proposal number in S, and if not available, just pick freely, and then you issue an accept. Let me remember that. And then you send the accept, it gets to the acceptors, and now this is the only place where the acceptor is required to send a rejection, which basically says if the acceptor did not respond with a higher promise, that is M, it did not respond with a higher promise, then it sends ACK, otherwise it sends rejection. So this is the first place where you do a rejection, which is the only necessary one. Then when you get a majority of responses, if you get a majority of ACKs, you decide and broadcast the site to all learners, otherwise you abort. In general, when you abort, it means that you are going to try again with a higher sequence number. This is the basic idea. So let us remember this now when we are looking to our examples. So the first issue is that there are many sources of abort. We can have contention where multiple proposals are competing. We will see an example of this. We can have, as I said, the algorithm does not require reliable link. You might have message loss so you don't get X, then you have also to restart sometime, and you can have process failure, like, for example, proposer dies. But you still must have a majority of acceptors surviving. So proposers might try abortable consensus again, which is basically they are trying to propose with a higher sequence number, and that is doing prepare followed by accept and then try again followed by prepare and so on. Now, as we know, consensus is not solvable in the asynchronous system. So in general, this sequence of trials might not terminate. And that is, is known from the FLP result that we just talked about before. The way to terminate is to guarantee that it is contention free and you have one leader that proposes, or you try to randomly wait before doing new proposals. And this is a probabilistic uh, then algorithm. So eventually, you might be the only proposer that you have time to perform the two phases of prepare phase and an accept phase. So let us look to the FLP ghost. So this is an example where you will not terminate. And here is just to understand the notation. These are timelines, and we have three acceptors, P1, P2, and P3. And A is the name of the proposer. So we have A is proposing now in the prepared phase with the number one, and he's getting an OK from the acceptors. Then we can have B proposing with around number three, prepare, and is getting OK. Then, if A goes to the accept phase, he will, of course, get rejection from all the acceptors because the acceptors here have promised not to accept any proposal less than three. So they fail. Now, A tries again with a prepare at round four, and B fails when he tries its accept phase, which was at round three, and this can go on and on and on, as we said. So the algorithm, as described, can basically continue forever, and liveness will not be satisfied.
So the normal way to solve these problems is that you use an eventual leader election that ensures liveness. So there is one proposer that eventually proposes values and that leads to termination. So this is just to understand how the impossibility of consensus shows here in the Paxos algorithm. Now, just to continue getting familiarizing with Paxos. So this is an example where different processes accept different values. So acceptors can accept different values. And also in the same example, one acceptor accepts different values. So assume we have four proposers, A, B, C, and D, and we have seven acceptors, as we can see here, P1, P7. So to get a value chosen, it has been accepted by four acceptors. So here is the first proposer A. He does a prepare phase on these four processes with round number one. And then he starts the accept phase and an acceptor, acceptor P1, gets the value red and accepted it. Now proposer B send a prepare at round two. This of course gets accepted by these four acceptors. And also it starts the accept phase and process P2, acceptor P2 accept the blue value. So we have now P1 accepting the red value, P2 accepting the blue value. We can continue on here, the same pattern, and we get P3 accepting the green value. We have now three different acceptors accepting different values. And then we get this proposer D and the acceptors accept the proposer D at round four, which is okay. And then he moves to the accept phase. And now he have the highest proposal number and then he will ensure a majority and the yellow value will be the chosen value. Again, you see here that we had different acceptors accepting different values yellow, green, blue, and red. And we have situations where the same acceptor accepts different values as long as they are with a higher proposal number. Like he's a case where P2 accepts blue and then accepts yellow. 